long wait to quit drinking. Okay, so in preparation for our brew day, which has been scheduled in for the 21st of this month, which is February, I've decided to go ahead and evolve the brewing kit a little bit. Uh, or my brewing kit, not a brewing kit, so to speak. So what I've decided to do, um, this is the lid to our boiler, 60 litre boiler. And as, we go, as I'm going to be brewing around a friend's house and it's going to be a group uh, deal, he doesn't particularly want his kitchen um, to be filled with the essence of beer, shall we say. Um, neither does he want it, nor does his wife. So what I'm going to actually do is essentially place some ducting into the inner diameter of this lid and draw the heat and the steam away and out the window into the back garden. So what I've just been messing around with is finding the right diameter to make this work. Now I've got eBay up on my screen here. Um, hopefully the white balance will fix itself, there it is. And on eBay they do um, aluminium uh, flexible ducting, ventilation ducting, from a decent company called Hydroponic Fans. This stuff is dead cheap. 125 or 5 inch diameter ducting with a 4 meter length comes to a mere £6.49 with free delivery. That's a bargain if I've ever seen one. So this is what I'm going to go ahead and purchase. But the issue that I had was there's many diameters to choose from, as you can see here. But the ones that I had my eye on were either 125 mil or 200 mil. And the only reason for that is these ridges goodness gracious sepia these ridges in the lid which prevent us from uh, going to a size between 125 and 200 mil I don't really fancy cutting something out on a ridge on an angle like this because it'll probably be a total disaster so I decided to go for a 125 mil 200 mil puts us about here which is pretty damn wide um, and I think we can get away with 125 mil now all I've simply done is I took that measurement, the diameter of 125 mil, halved it to get the radius, and then took this compass, um, which is a scoring compass. And I hope you can see this. I have scored a line all the way around that, giving us just short of 125 mil. I've allowed about 2 mil of play for a nice tight fit uh, with the ducting. I don't want it slipping out of there. A nice tight fit and we should be good to go so in a minute uh, we'll cut through get that hole opened up ready for this when it comes in the post now something else to add to the list of uh, considerations which did concern me a little bit actually before I even read of someone doing the same thing this comes from a website called uh, jimsbeerkits.com uh, uk. everyone's heard of this website in the British community. brewing community it's pretty damn common and in this particular forum thread, uh, this user is stating that they would lose about 12% of volume to evaporation over the course of the hour um, with a lid on, with no lid rather. But obviously putting a lid on changes the dynamic entirely and now we've got a situation where we're losing much less to evaporation. So that's something else I really need to find out how to calculate. It's either that or it's going to be a test run uh, with water to test the evaporation. Now, also in this forum was a very interesting um, point about what they like to call swan necking, um, which is a technique I've never heard of before, but apparently it works. Um, what ha what tends to happen with this configuration is the evaporated water will uh, the wort rather <laughs> I've been I've been out of touch. Give me a break. Um, it, the evaporation will make its way through the ducting, and then at the top of the bend will actually condense, and then with a swan neck you're actually going right back down, allowing it to run down through the piping and out instead of it running simply back into the wart. That's not good, not just because it's made of aluminium, 
but we don't really want any of the evaporation going back in anyway. Um, so they advise a swan neck to get around this solution. But also somebody on this forum said that you might still have some issues with evaporation falling back in, at which point you simply want to make a, a little curve out of plastic or something, uh, like a C-shaped curve to fit inside, like an inner lip inside of the ducting. So that if any water uh, or wart does, that's condensed does fall back down, it will hit that little piece of plastic. Where does it go then? Well, they then say that you make a small hole down through the swan neck with another piece of plastic tubing, which I've got loads of, stuck in there, which can drain it away into a bucket full of water. And that, I think, is absolutely genius. Because you're covering all your bases, even if there is some issues with condensation, you can get around them without having to worry, is any of that going back in the beer? So that's going to be this weekend's project for next week. Let's cut this out, and then I'll see you in a couple of days once I've cut this video all together. We've actually got this ducting, and we can see how it fits. Now, for those of you that have considered, or are considering, potentially putting in some ducting as an extractor for your brew, cutting out your lid, I may as well share with you my penny's worth from the last 10 minutes of cutting. Um, I've had been using quite a beefy scalpel. Uh, instead of just going in hard, full on, I realised i only got one shot to do this. So how am I going to approach it and not make a total catastrophe of the job? So what I did is I cut out the centre and then I simply started to quarter everything up and just keep going until I've got like sixteenths, as you can see here, all these little flaps which have been cut out individually. This means now that when I actually come to cut the circumference of the circle, that's... I can have some control over what I'm cutting. We can have goals from here to here and move on to the next section. So by the end of it, hopefully we should get a circle that's probably not going to be perfect, but it's going to be damn close. Um, instead of just freehanding it all the way around with a scalpel, which isn't the most delicate of instruments at the best of times, this seems like a much more controlled method of doing it. So you only get one shot to do this, people. So if you're ever thinking about doing putting in ducting, Make sure you cut your plastic lid out right first time. Harshy blows. Not too bad for freehand, I guess. It will do, you know. It will do the job. Um, some of you are probably wondering whether or not I'm going to use um, like a ducting coupler or like a, like a plastic adapter or a sheath to go around the outside to actually fit into this. I did consider that, yes, but the main issue that I've got with it is if it's made of PVC, is it going to be food grade PVC and secondly is it going to have a decent heat grade um, again you know we don't want condensation coming off the coupler and then falling back into the brew if it's toxic now one thing I forgot to add earlier which I'm going to add now is another reason why this uh, this ducting company up here on eBay do a good product uh, and that reason is right here. Operational temperatures, minus 30 to 140 degrees. Spot on if you ask me, spot on. Here it is, come in the post. Aluminium ducting, apparently branded with AluPro, again, a five inch diameter. And the difference between the price between the four and five meter was marginal, it's about 50p, so I thought I might as well go for the five liter. I don't think you can ever have too much of this stuff. You can have too little, certainly. Uh, yes, you can probably have too much that it becomes a burden, but for the job that we've got, half of the duct in is going out the window anyway, so the way I see it, the more flexibility, the better. Find that way. Oh, well, it seems like good stuff. It's quite sturdy on the outside. It's great. You can't really you can't really bend it much. It's quite quite rigid. Yes, yeah, good stuff. I'm not really sure what's going on here. I'm gonna have to cut that off with some wire cutters. It's pretty dangerous. <laughs> um, you know, no surprises though. It's cheap, 
I'm not going to complain about it, just it's got a bit of loose wire. Again, the end's a little bit poor, but we'll just cut that all off with a scalpel, trim it up, make it look half decent, and then we'll mount it to the lid. So we've got a, we've got a fantastic seal on here now. It's just like a massive slinky. Um, absolutely beautiful seal, I really can't complain. Now, what actually had to happen was, it wasn't just the push fit, uh, when the when the aluminium foil came, it was actually smaller than 25 mil, 125 mil. That 125 mil is purely an approximation. Don't bother cutting any holes before you buy the stuff. So instead of this just being a push fit into here, I actually had to take this piece of plastic, which is uh, it's basically like a double rim lid. There's an inner lip here. And then there's another lip on the other side just here. You can just see that. And it was just a lid um, that I picked up from somewhere. And I had to basically just trim down this diameter even more, get it a bit wider to be able to receive this. Um, the beauty of it is that because it's such a tight push fit, it actually compresses the aluminium into this gap so it's not going in that direction and it's not going in this direction because of this lip. <clears throat> like I always say, I'm a strong proclaimer when it comes to um, any sort of hobby which, like home brewing, can be very DIY. It's all trial and error, you just have to try it out for yourself. I just don't see the point in going out and buying something when you can make it. So I'm going to see how this holds up under heat. I'm going to do a test boil with water. And then we'll see how everything goes. Um, I think it should be up to the job. It's, uh, I, th I believe it's polypropylene, which has got good heat resistance anyway. Uh, as you know, this is PVC, so it's got good heat resistance anyway, up to about 140 degrees, I think. So, on the whole, it's not a bad job. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I mean, look at that. You know, I was talking about the, uh, the, the swan neck. Well, as you can see, there's not much of a neck on it at all. I'd say this right here, that's probably the apex point where some con condensed evaporated uh, liquid DMS and stuff might fall back in. I'm tempted just to not bother with the inside piece of plastic that I've been talking about earlier and just go for the brew. It's going to run down like this anyway. And oh, where's it gone? I don't know what I've done with it. Um, oh there it is, it's around the side I've got a uh, spring clamp here which we normally use for just random DIY around the home woodwork and that spring clamp is going to go on here and I've got a piece of string which I've just tied around the diameter of the thing and that's just going to get clamped in here as well so that this doesn't budge because that could be a bit of an issue I want everything to be nice and solid if someone happens to trip over this by accident, it's not going to come flying out there because it's anchored in at least in a different place. So I'm going to conclude this video here. Um, it's been 10 minutes of random DIY aluminium plastic nonsense. <laughs> but it's necessary. Um, and this is the time that it takes in, in, in real life, in real time. So... I thought I'd share it with you just so you can see the scale of some of the problems that us home brewers do have um, along the line. And sometimes these problems take a lot of troubleshooting to get right. But when they're right, then it makes us smile because we fix the problem all on our own. Happy days.